Hello viewers, you're welcome to this week's episode of Health Watch on Advent Cable Network Nigeria ACNN. I am Angela Emeka Ibimo. Breast cancer is a disease in which abnormal breast cells grow out of control and form tumors. If left unchecked, the tumors can spread throughout the body and become fatal. It is the most common cause of global cancer-related deaths in women and a public health burden in sub-Saharan Africa. In 2022, 2.3 million women were diagnosed with breast cancer and 670,000 deaths were recorded globally. However, the global estimates reveal a striking inequality in the breast cancer burden between different countries. For example, the Human Development Index. So, what is the Human Development Index? It's actually a summary measure of human development by a country's average achievement in three basic aspects. Now, this aspect, that is what you use to measure the human development, is number one, a long and healthy life as measured by life expectancy at birth. Number two, knowledge as measured by means of years of schooling and expected years of getting educated. And number three, you have a decent standard of living as measured by your gross net income, that's GNI per capita. So for instance, from this research we're really, really not right now, in countries with a very high development index, HDI, one in 12 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime, and one in 71 women die of it. In contrast, in countries with a low HDI, why only one in 27 women is diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime, one in 48 women will die from it. So what am I saying? What I'm just saying in summary is, in countries with low HDI, fewer women will be diagnosed with cancer, but more women will eventually die of the disease. So in Nigeria, our home country, breast cancer cases were historically low, but are now increasing at an alarming rate. It is the leading cause of cancer deaths currently, uh, you know, representing about 23% of all cancer cases and approximately 18% of deaths are attributed to it in this country. So today, we shall be discussing breast cancer. What is the cause of this increase? My guest is Mr. E.G.K. Ogo. Mr. E.G.K. Ogo is a clinical psychologist with the project Pink Blue. Mr. E.G.K., you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. You're welcome. At least I fulfill my promise of pulling you back. Oh, yeah. After the last like discussion. I told you, yeah. I'm always ready. And I'm so glad. Yes, you're ready. I, wish yes. you, I even contacted you in a short time <laughs> yeah, and you came yeah. up. Thank you for coming on you're the program. Welcome. Thank you. So, breast cancer, yeah. it's, um, it's, a, it's a quite a sad one. You know, I, I think in the last couple of months, I've known two people who actually died as a result of breast cancer and it's really it's really sad the state you see the person in it's painful yeah. and I thought what's happening while well, we have him before I, I, I've lived a year I wouldn't really know anybody that had the disease and then in one year I've seen two people you yeah. know that's that's quite a number of course women I haven't really seen men I heard some men get it, but I don't know how they get it, but I know some men get yes, yeah, some yes, form of breast cancer, but very, at very, very, very speed, low, yes, yes. low distance. So my first question would be, why this increase? Why? Historically, we didn't really, that was not a problem before now. Yeah. Okay. It's a burden. Yeah. The reason for the increase in the number, um, I could personally um, mention that they are in two folds. Okay. One, you know, the westernization, the adoption of Western lifestyle and culture. We now eat more of Western food than our forefathers did when they were eating organic foods. And then secondly, more importantly, increased in the diagnosis, diagnostic equipment, diagnostic tools and diagnostic manpower. So which means it could have been there all it, along, it but because we there, didn't It has know. been there all along, but because most people didn't even know what it was. Right. And most people didn't know what to call it. I could remember while we were growing up, a woman that had what I could today call breast cancer was termed to have been inflicted by the gods. Oh, okay. Because her breast was ulcerated, 
and in the village then that was like one of its kind we never saw a thing mm. like that mm. so the medical um, manpower around could not pick or tell what it what was, it was. Okay. you know and then again there was no financial power to explore or uh, um, sophisticated medical diagnosis outside the environment mm. so what did they do went to a chemist shop the chemist man could not attend to it went to the one local hospital environment where everybody would go and eventually mm. they said other people now started advising them that this is not the kind of sickness that you go to hospital oh, yeah. so they came back to the village and did have her things which helped to an extent but eventually she because died so the increase in the number i could say is as a result of an increase in awareness okay so more people get screened now hmm. and so the more people screen the higher the likelihood that you would see pockets of breast cancer here and there so more people now talk about it more okay. it has been there but there has been no um radar on it mm -hmm. now more people are talking about it so you tend to see it more more let me take you back to the when you talked about last lifestyle yeah you know of course you know based on what you said before it's always been there but i think pockets of it yeah. you know but this lifestyle i keep hearing this lifestyle this lifestyle this lifestyle yeah maybe i was born in a younger generation <laughs> <laughs> but at least i'm in the i'm within the bracket i mean we're headed to our 40s so mm -hmm. i'm both going to be 40. Mm -hmm. and i'm thinking why are we why what what changed what's the western westernization of course yes there's a, the prevalence among the western mm. uh, world is really high yeah but they don't die as yeah, much like, as like you read in your statistics yes you see is i call it a tale of two cities okay you see um just like um the distance between here we are now in gudu to guagualada mm -hmm. If you check the same distance in your village, you find out that you can just move from here and get to Gwagwalada in 30 minutes. Yeah. But it may take you two hours or more mm -hmm. to get to cover the same distance in your village. Mm -hmm. Why? Here you have better road. Of course. And yeah. the car you are going to use here definitely mm. will be a better one. Yeah unlike someone in the village that you may have to trek from here to maybe somewhere like Bega to get Okada, Okada. Mm -hmm. or get a taxi that will be going there but will have to wait for the taxi to load fully before it moves or maybe in, they have a, a, a culture that it is only on Fridays that moto go from Bega yeah. to area one or to Gwawalada so now why did I bring this analogy in the Western world, there are high number of diagnoses. There are high rate of cancer cases, but they have a better medical equipment, manpower, and so their recovery rate is higher. Okay. Do you get it mm -hmm, now? Mm -hmm. And two, in terms of information, they have more information. And, two, and secondly, because people survive it more, it tends not to affect them more. It tends not mm. to affect them more psychologically. Take for instance, I had cancer and I survived, and you know it. If you see any other person that was diagnosed of cancer, ah, it will be like, ah, is that not that thing that HK survived? But majority of the information we have here is somebody that died of cancer. Exactly, like because I've only seen anybody like, that, like you just yeah. mentioned, of two of your friends that mm -hmm. survived cancer but i must i can tell you for sure that about three or four or five of other people that you know may have survived cancer within that same period is it that they are afraid to talk about it or? yes and now this brings me back to what we do at project king blue okay you see when we realize the psychological burden attached with cancer diagnosis both for the patient and for the caregiver, for the entire family. In fact, um, cancer diagnosis is one of the emotionally troublesome thing that could happen oh, to any yes. family. So we, we, we established what is called psychological support center, where I manage. I am okay. the psychologist with the team. So what we do is to provide psychotherapy to cancer patients, cancer survivors, 
and their caregivers. Now we also have what we, in this uh, psychological support center, we have what we call our support group meeting. It is done every month, every end of the month, mm -hmm. where we bring cancer survivors together. Oh, really? Yes, and provide group psychotherapy. And it becomes a survivorship meeting where people that have survived will come and talk to people that are undergoing treatment. My friend, calm down. I went through this and I will be fine. And I am fine. Perfect, so yeah. definitely you will be fine. So it is different that I have gone through this road and I'm telling you that, yeah, it is a tough road, but I survived it. Like, unlike somebody that had never gone through it is telling you, I understand that the road is tough, but you will survive. You mm. will tend to appreciate it, it more if someone is giving you a hands on experience. So at Project Pink Blue, we have what we call a support group as part of our psychological support center where people that are battling cancer or that have survived cancer come together mm -hmm. meet themselves i provide group psychotherapy they also provide words of encouragement to each other if you have questions maybe you're undergoing chemotherapy and you are having some adverse reactions you could discuss with your colleague who used similar uh, uh, regimen and then the person could tell you how he or she dealt with it and then how he survived it and then the things to do and what not to do so, so the psychology now when you sorry I have to yeah, yeah. The, the psychology of it now mm -hmm. because that's your profession that's yes. where you are an expert in yeah. when somebody comes in mm -hmm. you know the person has cancer mm -hmm. and um, he's just been diagnosed with cancer yeah. and then comes to meet you yes of course because once you hear that word, it's just like mm -hmm. back in the days, yeah. when HIV. you say HIV, Great. the person is already dead, dead. Yeah. before um, before you even see the symptoms. Before you even check before you check in the other options, the yes. person is already considered. Right now, people are just moving around with it, and it sounds like nothing because of awareness. Great. Now, somebody walks into your office. Mm -hmm. What's the kind of things you walk the person through? What do you is, do? You start encouraging the person. Don't cry. Don't. As, uh, yeah, I know. I know. The, I know it will require a lot of expertise, yeah. but I just want to have an idea. Yeah. You know, just in case somebody is watching and mm -hmm. oh, I've just been diagnosed with cancer. I don't even know where to go to. I don't even know where to start from right and i think it's good to seek it, it's somebody like a clinical uh, psychologist to speak to you because yeah. even me sometimes my friends when they died i think i needed a clinical psychologist to speak to me because it's so traumatic yeah um like i said um cancer diagnosis mm. is psychologically disturbing both to the person the patient itself the person that will take care of the person mm -hmm. and the entire family why did i say so you see, what we suffer in Nigeria is not just cancer alone. We suffer cancer and we suffer the financial toxicity mm. that is associated with it. You see, in other parts of the world, majority of cancer treatment cost is being bought yeah, by the government, by the government yes. or insurance, so to say. But in Nigeria, in fact, before the cost of diagnosis alone is already taking your trousers off your waist. Mm. And then the cost of treatment, that alone is enough to bother. So, like, to answer your question, when someone comes to me, or, like, I also offer this psychotherapy at FMC, their oncology unit. Okay. So, most times, newly diagnosed are referred to see me. Okay. So, basically, what we do is psychoeducation because when you most of what i have found out is that when someone is um diagnosed of cancer the person tends to shut his or her brain mm -hmm. for possibilities and then because most of the information we have is the negative information yeah, course, so that is yes. what the person projects to his or her brain so the only thing the person is seeing him or herself is somebody that is going to take chemotherapy. In fact, they, that they say that it's not the cancer that kills, but it's the chemotherapy. Uh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? So you first of all relax the person, which takes a lot of time and a lot of expertise to relax someone in that position. Mm -hmm. But once the person is able to relax, you, are, you now begin to give the person factual information. Yes, cancer. But I keep telling people, and I know 
that cancer is just like every other sickness. Okay. When you detect it early and you follow the instructions of your oncologist. In Abuja, I can tell you that I have about 40 survivors or more in our network that we meet with every day, more than that. I'm just mm. being conservative mm -hmm. by yeah. giving that. You understand? More. You have people that have survived for 14 years. You have people that have survived for 10 years. You have people that have survived for five years and so on and so forth. So if you know that someone had survived this, you tend to approach the treatment yes, with a defense. better motivation. Mm -hmm. Unlike when you think that it is a death sentence. Oh, that is now when you begin to attribute what has happened to you to so many other variables. Yes. And some people will now tell you that it is attack from the from village. The religion, it is uh, somebody that mm -hmm. does not like you is from the devil. Or you now begin to say, God, why? And all those things. But if you understand that cancer is just like every other disease that can be treated, you tend to approach it in a better light. Right, okay. Now that's quite encouraging <laughs> to know that um, you can actually look at cancer as every other yeah. um, um, sickness. And just in case somebody's watching, it's not like a death sentence. It is not. Especially when discovered early. early. Okay, now, when it, the, the earlier you you know uh, find out about uh, mm -hmm. uh, breast cancer before i go into other things mm -hmm. i want to so how do you find out early breast cancer now breast cancer, many other cancer breast cancer uh, i think breast cancer is the easiest type of cancer to find out okay because uh, your breast is projected mm -hmm. so and i encourage every woman or even men likewise mm -hmm. to know yourself know your body you see um, i think um we this our orientation has to change. Women should be able to feel free to touch themselves. Okay. Know yourself. Be able, be able to feel yourself. Mm -hmm. You see, it is only when I know you as Angela, the way you are now, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I am very conversant with you. If there is any change in your face and I see you the other day, I will be like, Angela, what is happening? Nothing in here. But if I don't know you, or I know you haphazardly, if I see your face with a dent or with a mark, I could think it is part of your face. Mm. So, but when you know your breast, if there is a change, you could ask why the change. Okay. There are so many signs. It could be by the change of color. Okay. In your breast. Mm. It could be by a spot. Is it darkening or is it, it reddening? Any color, or any color? Most, most times red. Okay. Do you understand? It could be from a discharge from the nipple. Or maybe when you touch and you see a lump. Hmm. You see, because why these things are important is that they become a springboard to inquiry. When you see your breast and you are seeing pigmentation, you could now begin to ask your health provider, I noticed this. What could this be? Hmm. It could be nothing. It could be it's something. something. But why it is important to know it is, if it is nothing, fine. If it is something, also I fine, so. because it has now prepared you to take actions. Hmm. Yeah, so to find out breast cancer is that you have to check your breast. And if there is change, you see your health provider. That hmm. he or her will now guide you on the diagnostic procedures to confirm if it is cancer or non-cancer. Okay, now, um, when, when people don't, you know, when people begin to see these symptoms, maybe reddening mm -hmm. and all that, isn't it already late? No. Or is still early enough? Or, or Because I'm trying to think of, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of why it's killing so many people. <laughs> no, because, why, yeah. let me tell you something. Yeah. What is killing people in Nigeria mm -hmm. is not actually the cancer. Okay. Because it's the same cancer that people have in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and they survive. Yeah. By your statistics, we have less case here, but mm -hmm. more death here. So, what is killing people here is one, the financial toxicity. Mm -hmm. Why do I say so? Somebody in the village, mm -hmm. that probably all they have, cash and in asset, is not up to 200,000. Mm -hmm. And the person has noticed a lump. 
Oh. And the person had gone to a hospital. And they said they need to do a breast scan. And that to do a breast scan is 10,000. And she has done a breast scan. And they say it is a lump. And they say, okay, they need to do a, a biopsy. For the surgeon to even do the aspiration to bring out the specimen, you need to pay. And all this person has is 200,000, remember? So For feeding for the entire everything. life. And remember that you have cancer does not put to a halt every other activities around. If you are living in a rented apartment, you have to pay. Mm -hmm. If you have a car, you have to buy for it. If your children are in school, you need to pay their fees. And so many other things. All in this 200,000. Mm -hmm. Now, after this whole thing, they've done biopsy, okay, it is cancerous. And then you are referred to a tertiary health center where you can now get a specialist uh, care. And after that, you are given a, a prescription of chemotherapy to see a, an oncology pharmacist. Mm. And you are given maybe that a, a bill of, say, 300000 to be repeated every three weeks for a period of three months. And oh. in the course of diagnosis alone, you've depleted your depleted savings. Depleted your savings, yeah. So what usually happens is that people will now begin to advise that it I know the other the woman that yes. went for a herbal remedy and she was fine. But eventually they don't get fine. Hmm. What they do is they will take some herbal remedies that will give them some immediate relief. But that does not take away what is, what there. is already there. So and over time this thing will now come rejigged. It will come with a power, a, a super force. Mm -hmm. And then it breaks down the person. And that is why they say we have more death or that cancer is dangerous. It's because most times, when, even when we detect early, we don't have the financial way with that to take care okay. of it. Wow. So, so which means the financial part of it is a very serious part of our problem. It is the major, major problem. In fact, advocacy in the cancer space has gone beyond early detection. Yeah, early detection is fine. But what if you detect early and you early cannot, and you do, cannot anything? do anything about it? Do you get? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is good to detect early because it prepares you to take action. Mm -hmm. But you can now imagine a situation where you have detected early but you cannot take action. And so with time, you keep going and it keeps increasing. And increasing. And, increasing. and then, I like the story I was telling you, what usually happens is, the, the case that uh, of someone that has 200,000. Mm -hmm. After getting to the tertiary uh, health center now where the specialist has, you know, confirmed your diagnosis, made prescriptions, and written your treatment regimen, this person doesn't have money. So they go to their, their church or their mosque or call friends and so on and so forth. And then everybody now gather money that HK is sick and he needs 200,000. Uh, maybe the first prescription, HK is sick, he needs 500,000 to take his mm. uh, course of chemotherapy. Then people gather money, gather money, and they were able to provide that 500,000. And so you take the first course of chemotherapy. Expected to repeat BBC, this in yeah. three weeks' time. In three weeks' time, even if you're, if you're no able to money. raise three weeks' time, another three weeks might be difficult. So, at that point, it's just like there is a snake in the house. And you have gone to use snake, a stick to do pa pa pa. The snake will go oh, and take right, one yes. corner, one side, and prepare for action. So, you have just irritated the cancer. And so, it will come back with full force if you did not continue. Hmm. Wow. To come back with force so if you did not continue. continue. So the financial toxicity is a major problem. Hmm. Especially in Nigeria where cancer patients pay out of pocket. So presently in this country there is no NHIS. NHIS does not cover cancer. But there is what is called cancer fund. I, I, I can't remember the acronym. Okay. But it's is 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 a, a federal government intervention okay but even this with this intervention it also comes with so many caveats hmm. you must be adjudged to be vulnerable you, i mean um um somebody insolvent yes, so okay. insolvent somebody that cannot Not afford really this afford and the process of proving that can take 
and then how much did, is a hey, it is called cap it, it just cancer fund mm -hmm. you know so the co the cost of in the process of pro proving that you cannot uh, afford this is even a, a very long stuff and then how much are they even Going providing to on your behalf vis-a-vis -vis the actual cost of what you are doing so it is a very complex and long process oh. this it is now why it becomes psychologically burdensome on the patient yes on the caregiver, caregiver yeah. on the family because it it it, dra it drains a family it drains, it drains a family. totally it drains even after well, this is okay. Now, now I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting it clearer now. The issue why we still have this problem is not because we don't even have the equipment or the wherewithal. It's just the financial The equipment problem. issue is a different, it's a different ball ball game. Ball game it is not available as it's supposed to be. But even the little that is available, how many people can afford them? Hmm. For instance, in the course of treatment of cancer, most of the time, it involves chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So after some courses of chemotherapy, you could now be referred for radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. And then in the long run, you may also demand, you may also require a PET scan. Do you know that it is only in Lagos that they have one PET scan in the whole West Africa. So what's the PET scan supposed to do? PET scan is a scan of the whole body. It is actually used to check if it the cancer spread. is spreading. Mm -hmm. it, is, is, it is more like a gauge for treatment wow. to know if it has spread or if it is there. So most of the time, because most of the uh, diagnostic tools they use is they say do CT mm -hmm. or do MRI. MRI yeah. But then CT is regimented. It could always be CT of the abdomen, CT of the chest, CT mm -hmm. of the head, CT yeah. of the... But PET scan scans the whole body. A PET scan now is about almost a million plus. And from yeah. wherever you are, you have to go to Lagos and book and accommodate, uh, accommodate yourself and yeah, feed yourself for the period and return back and so on and so forth. How many persons can afford that? with every other demands around them oh. that i have cancer does not mean my family will not feed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it does not mean my kids will not go to school it, in fact it does not stop my old parents in the village from asking, for asking money you for money for because me. most times people have this sickness and they hide it away from their family members which is another very serious one where yes. people don't talk about it yes. because maybe wishing it away or just not i have in the do. course of my provision of psychotherapy to cancer patients, I have seen so many persons that would even turn down therapy sessions. Why? Because they don't believe... They, 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 they will tell you... Um, one told me that uh, I just came to this clinic to fulfill our righteousness. They've said their own, but my God has a different thing. And from that day till now, she has never returned to the clinic. This is a young girl of less than 30. Because you hear people even give testimony of it yes. that oh I came to this church and suddenly but yes. what we don't have is the afterwards after the person gives the you testimony see, you see, don't follow up. What what usually happens sorry to say mm -hmm. is that maybe the cancer went on break. Okay. It's possible where it um, halts its um You see it's just like somebody that you know had a fracture. If you don't irritate it most of the time, you may feel that the wound is gone. Not until you use it to touch somewhere else. Mm. I'm sorry to say, I am a Christian, but prayers don't heal cancer. You need to treat it. it yeah. You need to treat it and then pray to God that the medications yes, will work. work. If medication wasn't necessary, God wouldn't have given the doctors the wisdom the to wisdom the doctors. To get it, yes. yeah. so even diagnose it, even know what it is. Yeah. So, people that are going to churches to do testimony should also try to check again after some time. Mm. Bringing us to even another issue in cancer, recurrence. 
Okay, I'll be, we'll go for the recurrence when we come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm actually seeing it from a different angle. Yeah. Why I love having you on the program is that it always takes me to a different <laughs> angle. It brings me up from my little hole of thinking in one way. And now I'm beginning to see it from a different light. And, yeah. and that's beautiful. But when we come back, we'll start with the recurrence. Okay. We'll be right back here. Now streaming. Now analyzing. Now assessing. Now discussing. Now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN is now streaming, discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities and our country. Welcome back viewers. Before we went to the break, we are discussing breast cancer and my guest is still Mr. Eji Kebu. He's a clinical psychologist with the project Pink Blue. Like I said before we went to the break, I always like where you take me to. It's always a discussion. <laughs> I think that's the difference between a psychologist and a normal, <laughs> a normal you, person. You, you, yeah, so. you know, it, it's really encouraging. I mean, one of the things I'm taking back now is yeah. to look at cancer like every other illness. Yes. Yes. If you detect it, even sometimes the malaria we think we all treat takes the life of a lot of people. You, you see, you see, what I tell people is, um, for instance, someone that has diabetes. Mm -hmm. Once the person takes his or her medication, the person is fine. Just like the current mm -hmm. position with HIV. People that have yes, HIV. Yes, the time HIV was a scare. Yes. In the 90s. Yes. So but right, so now, right now, it's like somebody will have about HIV, it. he takes his medication, he marries, it yeah, won't affect the wife. Yeah. They're born, and the baby will be HIV free. Just like cancer, if you detect it early, and you, in, and you are in Nigeria, and you are able to foot the bill, you will be you will find like every other person. So the problem is the delay. The problem. In Are Nigeria, the finance, the finance, the, finance, of the yeah. finance, because even when some people find out, that is when they detect it early. Hardly would you see people that will be able to follow through yeah, the treatment yeah. regime in the terms of cost. Hmm. And so, because of this underlying factor. People tend to only see the bad news, mm. not knowing what may have happened on the ground to bring about that bad news. Yeah. That is why all you see is somebody that died of cancer. Somebody, and then because, for instance, just look at this situation. I am from Osoka in the Middle State. Mm. You can imagine somebody that is living in my village that is diagnosed of cancer. And is able to move all the way from so can come to Abuja. And he probably sold a piece of land in the yeah, village. Yeah, come and treat them. So. And then he, she or she had come here and got stopped. And then there is no option than to go back to the village. Hmm. Not healed. So imagine the kind of impression everybody in that, that village that knows that that person is sick and is sick with cancer will have about cancer. So just as him say he's the one he went and came back and didn't get well. In fact, most of them will now begin to believe that there is no orthodox medical care for cancer. Mm. Not knowing that is because he or she is not able to take care of the bills. Take care of the bills. And many people might not really tell you because of probably their pride. They will not yeah, tell you they can't afford to. Of course. To, say, and oh. so this is now when they now begin to resort to alternatives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Either going to harbor or going to churches or going to so many other things. And we should take advantage of them. And okay. then, because of our the nature of our environment, the so-called uh, churches will take advantage of them. And maybe the person came very down. And they've done one or two abracadabra, and the person is looking a bit healthier, and they will say the, cancer, the prayer has healed the person. Not so it talks about reoccurrence. Not, uh, hey, so mm -hmm. reoccurrence now is even a very serious issue. But we can only talk about reoccurrence when you have been healed in the first place. Okay. So reoccurrence is because cancer has the ability to come back. Mm. Like we know, cancer is just like every other cell in the body. So it can 
they come multiply back. It so, but the back. major problem with if anybody that has survived cancer is that psychological burden of reoccurrence. So many times you see somebody that had finished her treatment, his or her treatment, and the person is fine, but because the person has a symptom of malaria, the person will travel all the way from anywhere to come and see his or her doctor. Okay. Doctor, I am feeling somehow. This place that they operated me is paining me. Hmm. I make no be say this medicine, this disease don't, don't come back. back. Yeah. So the person is under this psychological circle of hey, this thing is coming back. Oh. This thing is coming back. Any slight thing, any slight feeling of ache, this cancer is coming back. This cancer is coming back. Hmm. So it is a psychological burden for cancer survivors. Okay, but let, let, I want to ask a question that I just Please came to ahead. my mind, okay. and I'm happy I'm speaking to a psychologist. <laughs> Where is the power of the mind with sickness? You know, some people, I've, I've heard people say, depending on how you see something, that is how it responds to you. Um, without sounding ex extemporal or whatever, but mm. with, how, how does it work? Okay. You know, because I'm seeing, I, I can imagine if somebody is confident about what makes us not even fall ill sometimes or something? We take, take it for granted. Oh, I'm feeling malaria. Oh, go and take this in and you're fine. Because in your mind somewhere, it's just... Is that how it works? Okay, if you let, 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 let help me, me here. Let, let me help you here. Okay. Okay. Angela, you're stupid. Did you take any offense? Well, no, no. You didn't take any offense. I <laughs> no. just, I just I, uh, said you're stupid. Yes. You didn't take no offense. Mm -hmm. Why? Because... The environment, the whole thing does not call for that. Call for it, yes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And this is more like a joke. So you cannot imagine walking out of this place now and the security man calls you a stupid woman. Just those security Yes, what hell will break loose? Do you get the point <laughs> now? Yeah, yeah. So this is the same Angela, you are stupid. But different interpretation, different context. Hmm. So that is the power of the mind. Oh, wow. Okay. I just called you a stupid woman, and, mm -hmm. and you are smiling with me. Mm -hmm. There is no no no, no ill feelings. Do you get? Mm -hmm. But another person called you a stupid woman, and you are reporting him or her to the boss. You are blocking the gate and asking him to yeah. justify why he should call you that. Now you have interpreted this to be a friendly exchange of uh, pleasantry or whatever it means. But the other one is an uh, is an abuse. All right. So perception most of the time has high power hmm. and not the, the power of psychology in medicine you see if you don't trust your doctor you don't trust the system hardly would you get healed yes, even fun. when you are healed hmm. sometimes if you want to see the power of psychology in medicine, take your mind back to a village woman who each time she is ill goes to a particular chemist man, patent medicine man in that village to buy medication and she feels better. Most of the time, if you bring that woman from the village to Abuja and she feels somehow she will demand you to call that That's, her patent yeah, man yeah. that he is the person that knows the medication that he will give to her and she will be fine. And it could just be... It could be just an adjustment. Just an adjustment, yeah. Hmm. So the mind has a way, a higher percentage to control every other thing. In fact, hmm. it is believed that um, healing is 80% psychological. Hmm. And that is why what we are doing with cancer patients is commendable. Yeah. Um, the, with the level of information that is available about cancer in Nigeria, providing professional psychological care to cancer patients and their caregivers can never be Exercise, yeah. In fact, sometimes <clears throat> the burden of a cancer patient can be internal. 
I've had a client where the caregiver, in my course of trying to talk to the person to show empathy to the sick fellow, mm. and then I told her to put herself in the shoes of the, the sick, sick person. She rebuked me and said it is not her portion. She can never put herself in the shoe of someone that has cancer. She has nothing to do with cancer. She has no relationship with cancer over her dead body. So you can now imagine you are sick in the hospital. The person that is saying this is somebody that is taking care yeah, of you. Yeah. Won't you be seeing yourself as a living corpse? Yeah. So providing psychological intervention to the family of cancer patients also helps in the healing process because it helps bring all of them to the same page. Mm. This person that has this cancer within your folk has not done anything to deserve, to deserve it. it yes. It could it have just come to him or her. Mm -hmm. So if you give him or her the enabling environment, the needed support, it amplifies this inner strength to yes, fight, fight the cancer. Mm. Because the journey in cancer treatment is actually a fight. That is why we call cancer survivors champions. champions. Because they have fought the cancer and they've defeated it. Hmm. I, I, what you're saying is really true. I have a friend, she's in the US. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to secondary school together. Mm -hmm. And one day I saw on her Facebook page and she, as she talked about how she survived cancer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she kept on saying was that the support she got from her family, family. and her mom. Yeah. In fact, when she went bald, her mm -hmm. mom actually went bald mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. Her friends actually shaved their mm -hmm. hair with mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And they gave her that full support. support. And she said, I made up my mind that no matter what happens, this cancer will not have me. I'm going to come out of this cancer success. Well, when she came out, she wrote it. And one of the things she kept on saying was that the strength she drew from mm -hmm. other people. Great. So when we are around cancer people, it's not like they did anything wrong. Mm -mm. It's not like they committed a sin yeah. or God is punishing them mm -hmm. like it's normally amongst people mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they didn't pray well mm -hmm. or they didn't fast mm -hmm. well or they didn't they do something well. They're not born again well, yeah. you know. They're born again that die of yeah. it. They're good people. They're bad people that die mm -hmm. of it. But it's just to give that support. It yeah. makes a lot of difference. Yeah. And, and wow. this is now what takes away the psychological body. Wow. You see, when... Because most of the things... In fact, there are so many things psychologically to talk about cancer the stigma that's another one i want to uh, you just uh, mentioned oh. about your friend losing her hair uh -huh. it's called alopecia yeah now you can imagine a fine girl yeah losing her hair if she's not properly psychoeducated or cancelled before the therapy starts that alone may bother her hmm. I, I had I had one woman in the clinic that came and in the course of trying to explain to her that she would take uh, chemotherapy and she may lose her hair, she said no. If she's this is a woman in in her fifties, if she will lose her hair, she's not doing. Wow. So she was now referred to see. But me. after treatment, she still grows. She back. was referred to see me, and after mm -hmm. therapy, she came back and said she would do. Oh, wow. Because when I, I was able to make her understand that, have you ever shaved your hair? You said yes. I said, well, so what happened after you shaved? They say it regrew. So why are you okay, thinking yeah. this won't grow too? Mm. So sometimes, because the information out there, if you type cancer now in the internet, what you may see more is death, death, death. death, death. death, death. So it is also a call on people that have survived to, to talk, come about, out and talk it. about it. Yes. Talk about it. Mm. When people know that, yeah, this AGK I'm seeing on television today had actually survived cancer, another person can just deal with it and move on. Just like you said, talked about the recurrence. You know, some people when they survive, they start saying, you oh, know, uh, the other person survived though. Mm -hmm. After some years, he came back. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, truly, truly, I, I, I think I've also gone through a therapy session right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I did the other time. You I have, went through a therapy I think this session. Time you have to and I stopped paying you, right? <laughs> I think I've gone through a therapy session because my whole mind is, well, I, I'm medically inclined, mm. but I think because 
it's not becoming so much around me mm. it's coming home before mm. it's from a distance you can mm. just talk to somebody mm. and say oh don't take this don't mm. take this cancer is as a result of this this mm. and then you, you you know it's not home until yeah. you now start seeing people that are close by yeah. and you're thinking wow this is actually real yeah. this is actually so what enters your head is oh once you get it this is it mm. there is no cure there is no treatment you see me sometimes googling current cure on cancer Current research, okay. I, I think I can tell you most of the research. That's how I was able to tell you what <laughs> President Putin what was saying, saying about, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah. cancer. The, uh, the good thing yeah. is that uh, medicine is advancing in cancer. Yeah. And uh, I must uh, give credit to the medical family. Okay, just for instance, recently in Nigeria, we have vaccine for cervical cancer. Yeah, which is a huge which one. Is a huge which is a huge one. Which means children from, I think, 16. Nine, nine, nine to 14. Nine to 14. Yes. So in a couple of years, cervical cancer should be out, out of the of radar. The, of the if radar. we do the right if, we, if, if, if people would turn out, turn out to, take to, the to, vaccine. to take the vaccine. Yes. Because I have also seen a lot of people come up with these, their conspiracy theories. Uh, vaccine is uh, or evil people want to kill us and stuff like that. It happens that. in COVID. We yeah. are out of COVID now. So, everybody is. So if people would release their kids to have it done, it would be, be better. Good, yes. And then again, people, is, we have a bad culture regarding our health hmm. here okay. in Nigeria. I think that's the part I want to hear now. <laughs> you see, we. We pay no attention to inanimate objects against our own self. Mm. People that have cars don't wait for a mechanic to tell them to change oil. I think they change every six months. Some people every four months they fix the go to do. People that have cars sometimes would hear one noise and rush to mechanic. But our body will be giving us sign and we will ignore it. Yeah. What is too hard in discussing with your doctor to itemize some few needful investigations you could do every month or every year mm. or every six months? Hmm. Do you know that if you do your investigations regularly, and maybe in the course of one random investigation, you just found out that there are changes. You have 99% chances of getting cured. Yeah. And really, some of hospitals are actually doing it at very discounted rates yes, right now. Yes. Yeah. Almost every hospital or every diagnostic center have what they call uh, diagnostic packages. Package, yes. Where you come, things that you were supposed to do maybe for 9,000, they merge them together. If you divide, you find out that it's coming down to around 6,000 or so. That's the so, thing is because people are afraid of hearing something. Because, now, you know, sometimes you, you, you like you, yeah, you know, yeah, people, people are afraid of hearing Afraid of hearing, of hearing they say that what the man does not know no, does, does not kill, not kill them. <laughs> uh, but then, most times, I keep telling people that it is what you don't know that kills you more. Yeah. Now, let us assume. This is the analogy I usually use. Mm. This building. One, the security house is on fire. And so somebody just goes and sees smoke and raise alarm and they quench it. Yeah. Maybe they even had to call fire service, service yeah. and they quench the fire. What has it ended up doing? Saving this whole, whole building. building. Why? Because somebody checked and saw smoke. Mm. So you can now imagine when that security house is on fire and nobody this checked. Anything. Keep going. And it continued and then penetrated through the wire to the fence to air and then comes to the building. And nobody did anything. The only time people outside will see is when this roof, the roof, has, is on fire. Is on fire. And when by then you're already... And by that time, even if the whole fire service in Abuja can't really do much. They can save the structure, but what of the content? My time is already up, but you know, there's a question I want to ask Please you about do. sugar and cancer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. There's been so much, you can see, I, I say I read a lot of mm -hmm. cancer. People will say, oh, cut out sugar and cancer, cancer will die. starve. You know, stop taking it as much as it's good to eat healthy because yeah. excessive sugar really is not, I don't yeah. think it's, yeah. it has any mm -hmm. um, nutritional benefit actually. But yeah, you know? the issue of sugar and cancer, it may be 
properly answered by a dietitian. Okay. But the more I know mm. is that just like sugar is no excess sugar. Yes, yes, yes. Is not good for every other person. A okay. cancer person, a cancer patient is not a different human being. Yeah. But the pa the cancer patient that is undergoing treatment actually needs food. A uh, good food. Go food very good food. food yeah. To be able to withstand the chemotherapy. the chemotherapy because as the chemotherapy is breaking down the cancer cells it is also breaking down the normal cells that divide as fast as, fast cancer, as cells. cancer cells so you yeah. need good food to be able to uh, enable those ones to regenerate so you can level. now imagine when somebody is undergoing chemotherapy and one good friend had told you not to eat good food mm, so how faster. would you regenerate so mm. that is why most times you see some of them looking very very skinny and lanky in the course of treatment mm. so the issue of um, food, well, yeah. food uh, diet and cancer um, is a yeah, very broad uh, topic but it is most times properly handled by a dietitian. dietitian I think I need to get them because I know a lady who who was actually you know, she was, you know, the, the doctors had told her that your cancer is um, really gone down. It's mm, not what it's on it's, Yes. And advised, you know, through mm. the dietitian, you know, eat more healthy, mm -hmm. more vegetables mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And the young lady went back to her normal drinking, mm. you know, all the normal life. Mm. And, and right now she's actually battling for, you know, her life. So, yeah. because sometimes when you are advised, just like you said, mm -hmm. that um, trust your doctor, follow yeah, the instruction. Yeah, yeah. You know, they know what they are saying mm -hmm. and what they are mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different from somebody who has seen the patient mm -hmm. and seen the recovery, mm -hmm. you know, and the mm -hmm. difference mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these things happen. I think, I, I think I've gone through a therapy session today. No, uh, thank you. <laughs> like, let me also mention this. Okay. You see, um, in cancer management, what is very important, you know, in addition to the chemotherapy and everything is lifestyle modification. Okay. Because some of our lifestyles hmm. actually predispose us. Some of our tattoos, so some of these carcinogens. Mm -hmm. So it is better, like I keep saying, obey the instructions Instruction, of your yeah, doctors. doctors. If, they, if you used to take alcohol, and they've told you because of your current condition do away with it it is a choice between living and dying mm -hmm. so you choose yeah. if you used to smoke those two things are actually risk factors for almost every cancer no. actually so almost everything, everything actually almost everything, everything. now diabetes mm -hmm. hypertension so these those, are, the so are the common issues. risk factors yeah yeah, yeah. that's it okay or like yeah. a doctor <laughs> I told you to go. I just because I just save yet. me, save me this um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this no mistake. So I'll I'll just be saying it freely without. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll consider but. that <laughs> when the economy when gets better, it's going to get better <laughs> okay. because okay. I don't. I, I want to be able to just say it easily without this. Uh, well, Mister Jike, thank you so much for coming on oh, okay. the program. Thank I you, yeah. I've gone through a therapy session. I, I think anytime I need therapy or anything, I just uh, I know who to call. <laughs> I'm serious about it. I don't want to go because actually the discussion today took me away from, you know, where I've always thought of it to a different place, and I'm really grateful for that. And I want to believe my viewers that are watching, especially people who, yeah. you know, are suffering or have family members who are going through the same thing. This yeah. would be a good place to listen to yeah. a good discussion to listen to, so that you can know how to go about it. Because it's not right. a death sentence. I like that statement. Yeah, it is that was what we used to say those in HIV AIDS. You know, when HIV AIDS was. Yeah. You know, the in thing. It's not a death sentence. In fact, I, I, I want to say this. Mm. Anybody that has anybody, anyone that is battling with cancer, should do well to connect with Project Pink Blue. Okay. Because you will be able to have first hand interaction mm. with those that have survived. survived. Okay. So if you feel that uh, what you are facing is what nobody has faced. You see people that have gone through Don't that, the same thing. Uh, you know, like the, we say in, in Nigerian parlance, 
you if you think you are seeing shege you see people that have seen shege pro max and yeah. they are surviving yeah yeah so that's so it. how do we contact project pink blue is it um, email to go to their website yeah, send you, an can email. Go, you can check our website or our email website www.projectpinkblue.org project pink pink blue blue dot all org. in locals.org dot org. okay dot pro, org. the project pink blue is pet projects P caps uh, mm -hmm. the other words low caps lo, low letters okay. pink blue all in caps okay. dot org okay dot org email info at projectpinkblue.org project dot org, dot org. Yeah. just google it yeah just google pink blue it, and it will come up and then you yeah. get all that information, all information so please don't yeah. die alone don't please say, don't 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 yeah. there is help yes. at least you will see Mr. And, so and, and and the other good thing is for now anybody that has cancer or a relative of someone that has cancer can actually assess psychotherapy at Project Pink Blue for free. Oh, yay! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so please, if you, if you have somebody, please, I think I think you should see yes. um, uh, Mr. IGK yeah. Ubu. Um, he will, you can access um, psychotherapy yes. for free yes. uh, without paying anything. Yes. So bring them. I, I, I trust the treatment. I took that <laughs> of the program. I've had my own <laughs> session, a therapy session. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you You're so much welcome. for coming out there. Uh, I'll still bring you back here. No <laughs> I heard like, oh, thank you so yes, much. All right, viewers, for the past couple of minutes, we've been talking on breast cancer. I think it should be the psychology of the psychology <laughs> of breast <laughs> cancer. And uh, we've been discussing... The, uh, Basically, the psychological part of breast cancer. It is called psycho oncology. Psycho oncology. Yeah. Psycho oncology. <laughs> and my guest has been Mr. Ejike Ogu. He's a clinical psychologist with Project Pink Blue. Thank you so much for joining us, and I believe you enjoyed our discussion today. Please contact um, Project Pink Blue. Google it; you will find more information on that. And we'll see you next time. I'm Angela Shemeka Ibibo. Goodbye. <laughs>